So, the next uh, application of the operation and amplifier is uh, oscillator. So, oscillator is uh, a feedback amplifier in which a part of output is the feedback to the input. So, this is a type of feedback amplifier. in which a part of output is fed back to input. So, the type of feedback that we are going to use here is positive feedback. You might have studied this uh, negative feedback circuits in your uh, analog circuits course, whereas in oscillators the type of feedback is positive. Here if I properly choose the output signal which is going to be fed back to the input with proper magnitude and uh, proper phase, we can generate the different types of the waveforms. If the output fed back to input have proper amplitude and phase. Then this circuit generates waveforms. So, what type of waveforms is basically? It can be sinusoidal waveform, it can be rectangular waveform or it can be triangular waveform. Initially I will discuss about the sinusoidal uh, oscillators, later I will discuss about the rectangular and triangular waveform generators also. Now, here we are going to derive the condition on this uh, output amplitude and output phase. So, what is the condition? So, that this feedback amplifier circuit will generate the oscillations or it generate the waveforms. So, for that I will consider the block diagram of this oscillator as yes. there is a amplifier circuit in the feed forward path. Say the gain of amplifier is A. So, the output is a V naught, input is a V D. Then a part of output will be fed back to the input via feedback network. This is feedback network. which feedback factor is say beta. So, the output of this feedback network is if I call this one as V f is equal to beta times V naught, where beta is less than unity. Then there will be some input V i and then this feedback signal will be added with the input that is why the type of feedback is called as positive feedback. So, you see the circuit diagram later we are going to uh, derive the expression for this uh, conditions on uh, amplitude and phase by putting V i is equal to 0. One important uh, point uh, for the oscillator is oscillator does not contain any input unlike any other amplifiers. So, what are the uh, three relations uh, that we have to derive the condition for this uh, amplitude and uh, phase? So, 
one expression is V D is equal to this V I plus V F. But what is V F? Beta times V naught. And what is V naught? A times V D. So, this is equal to A times V D is V I plus V F. And what is V F? A times V I plus V F is beta times V naught. If we take uh, this V naught times to one side and uh, V I times to other side, 1 minus A beta times V naught is equal to A times V i or what is uh, V naught by V i the transfer function of this system is equal to A by 1 minus A beta. This is the transfer function of this circuit. Now, here we are going to make this V i as 0. This is one of the important property of the oscillator is that the input is 0. So, from this uh, relation V i is equal to 0 and V naught is not equal to 0. So, this will satisfy from here by uh, making this 1 minus A beta is equal to 0 implies A beta is equal to 1. So, what is the magnitude of A beta is equal to unity and what will be phase angle of A beta this should be either 0 degrees or 360 degrees. Then only this condition A beta is equal to 1 will be satisfied. So, these are the two conditions one on the magnitude another on the phase as I have defined this oscillator as the amount of the output that we are going to fed back is having some proper amplitude and proper phase. So, what is that proper amplitude is this, proper phase is this and this particular uh, criteria is called as Bark Hassan criteria. So, this is the basic principle of the oscillator. Now, there are different types of the oscillators. So, one is called as RC oscillator. The feedback circuit is going to be constructed using R and C components. And if the feedback is uh, constructed using uh, L and C components, the corresponding oscillator is called as LC oscillator. So, there is one more different types of the oscillator which uh, we are not going to uh, develop by using the operational amplifier. So, that is called as crystal oscillator. So, this RC oscillator will be basically used for the generation of audio frequency signals. Twenty to twenty kilohertz normal range is, and this is for the radio frequency RF. This is also radio frequency, but the principle of the crystal oscillator is different from the that of RC and LC oscillators. Here we are not going to use any RC or LC circuit, but here there is a crystal. So, if I apply some force on the crystal, this will vibrates and it will generate the oscillations. The advantage of this crystal oscillator is this is more stable when compared with RC and LC oscillators. The stability of oscillator is defined as the ability of the oscillator to generate an exact frequency or to oscillate at an exact frequency. is called as frequency stability.
what are the factor that are going to uh, affect the frequency of oscillations let f naught is the frequency of oscillations there are two parameters which affect this frequency of oscillations one is temperature and other is uh, dc power supply variations So, for the amplifier there will be no AC uh, source, but there will be some DC power supply. So, if the DC power supply uh, voltage changes then the F naught also will changes. So, whereas for this crystal oscillator regardless of this temperature variations or DC power supply variations the frequency of oscillations is almost constant. That is why this crystal oscillator will be normally used in microprocessors to generate the clock. So, in this course we will discuss about the different types of RC and uh, LC oscillators. So, the first RC oscillator is the RC phase shift oscillator. So, the circuit diagram of this RC phase shift oscillator is this consisting of some amplifier part and the feedback part. This is amplifier basically inverting amplifier non inverting terminal will be grounded and the part of output is fed back to the input through RC network. There are three sections of RC networks here this is one section, this is second section, this is third section. Then this will be fed back to the input, input is applied at inverting terminal. This is R1, RF. So, the amplifier part here will be this. This is your amplifier part. And the uh, feedback path will be this. So, if I take this the block diagram that we have discussed uh, in the last uh, slide. This is the block diagram of oscillator. This is amplifier with A, this is feedback path with beta, and here we will get y na V naught output. This VI we are going to get 0, and this is VF, and this is VD. This is plus plus because VI is equal to 0, you can remove this. So, we can make this circuit as simply. A beta this is feedback V D is equal to V F this is output. So, this A part is this which is going to provide A and this feedback path is the network which provides the feedback factor or feedback gain of beta and here we are going to take the output V naught and input is 0 there is no input here. Because the amplifier is uh, inverting amplifier whose gain is minus R f by R 1 this minus sign represents 180 degrees phase shift. So, the condition for the oscillations is A beta magnitude should be 1 or in uh, in general it may be greater than 1 also phase angle should be 0 degrees or 360 degrees because here the a part is giving 180 degrees phase shift the remaining 180 has to be provided by beta so that beta this three rc sections has to provide total of 180 degrees phase shift so each rc section will provide 60 degrees phase shift
So, with this circuit you can generate here sinusoidal signal without any input. Now, what is the frequency of this sinusoidal signal? If I call the frequency of oscillations as f naught, this f naught is a function of r and c, this is a function of this r and this c. And what is the expression for this frequency of oscillations of this RC phase shift oscillator? In order to derive this uh, expression, we will consider first the feedback path. Here the output that is given is V naught, here the output that is taken is V f, because the output of this beta is V f, input is V naught. So, I will just consider only the beta network separately. So, there are three RC sections. And here we are going to take the output Vf and here the voltage is with respect to this ground V naught. Now, what is beta is nothing but V f by V naught. Once if I know this beta, then I can find out the frequency of oscillations. So, in order to derive the expression for this beta, I will consider the three loops. This is loop 1, let the current in the loop 1 is I 1, current in loop 2 is I 2, current in loop 3 is I 3. So, you apply K V L in loop 1. We have this current through this capacitor is in this direction, so this is plus minus this is I 1, whereas in this resistor the current is I 1 flows in this direction, this is plus 2 minus I 2 flows in the opposite direction. So, the resultant uh, voltage is I 1 minus I 2 into R. So, I am taking the convention as plus 2 minus as positive value, then the minus 2 plus becomes minus, minus V naught plus I 1 what is the voltage across uh, this capacitor I 1 into? So, we know that V is equal to Z i, Z is the impedance. So, in case of capacitor, what is Z is 1 by S c. So, here the current is I 1, so 1 by S c. So, this will be I 1 into 1 by S c. And the direction of this current through this R is R times I 1 is in positive direction, I 2 is in negative direction is equal to 0. This is the Kirchhoff voltage law in uh, the first loop. So, if I simplify this in terms of I 1, I 2, what is the factor of uh, I 1? This is 1 by S c is here and here this is R times I 1 and what is the factor of uh, I 2? minus r i 2 minus v naught is equal to 0, this is equation 1. Now, let us take loop 2. So, in this loop, this current is i 2, so this direction is plus 2 minus. Now, in this resistor r, this will be I 2 minus I 1, because now we are taking the I 2 in the positive direction and I 1 will be in the negative direction. Whereas, in this R again I 2 minus I 3. So, what will be expression? This R times I 2 minus I 1 plus 1 by S c times I 2 plus R times I 2 minus I 3 is equal to 0. 
So, if you simplify this, if I take all uh, I1 times to one side, I2 times to other side, I3 times to one more side, then what will be the uh, result? What are the I1 factor? Minus R times I1 and I2 will be, there are uh, three times, I2 times, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So, this is R, R becomes 2R plus 2R plus 1 by SC times I2 and then I3 term is only one term which is minus R times I3 is equal to 0. This is expression 2. Then loop 3. Here this is plus minus, this is I3 and this current through this resistor is I2 minus I3. So, plus R times I3 minus I2 plus 1 by SC times I3 plus in this only I3 current flows R times I3 is equal to 0. So, if I take I1, I2, I3 terms separately, what is I1? There is no I1 term and I2 term is minus R I2 and I3 term will be 2R plus 1 by SC is equal to 0. This is expression 3. Now, from this equation 1, 2, 3, basically I want a Vf by V naught. So, I have to express this I1 in terms of I2, I2 in terms of I3, I3 in terms of I naught. So, what is the expression for Vf from here? So, this current through this one is I3, voltage across this resistor is Vf, resistance is R. So, V is equal to R into I. So, Vf is equal to R times I 3. So, basically I am going to derive this I 3 in terms of V naught. So, that if I take the ratio of V f to V naught, we will get the beta. So, in order to express this I 3 in terms of V naught, first I am going to express from here, from equation 1, you express I 1 as a function of I 2. and you substitute this I 1 here and express I 2 as a function of I 3. Then from this third expression I 2, I 1 everything will be in function of I 3. So, we will be having here this will be a function of only I 3 and V naught. So, finally, I will get the expression for the beta. So, I will start with the equation 1, I will express I 1 in terms of I 2. So, what is expression 1? 1 plus SC plus R into I1 minus R I2 minus V naught is equal to 0. Minus R I2 minus V naught. So, implies what is I1? If I take LCM as SC, so 1 plus SRC divided by SC is equal to V naught plus R into I2 or implies what this is into I1. Implies what is I1? Is equal to SC times V naught plus R I2 divided by 1 plus SRC. This is equation 4. Now, we will substitute this equation 4 in equation 2, so that I can eliminate this I 2, this I 1. So, minus R I 1 plus two R plus 1 by S C I 2 minus R I 3 is equal to 0. So, I will substitute this I 1 here now. So, what happens now? Implies minus R S C already S C is there into V naught plus R I 2 by 1 plus 
src is the first term and the second term also if I take sc as lcm this is 2 src plus 1 by sc into i2 minus r i3 is equal to 0 implies overall lcm will be sc times 1 plus src and uh, what will be the numerator here this will be multiplied with this sc so this becomes minus r s square c square into v naught plus r into i2 plus here sc is this so we have to multiply this with 1 plus src 1 plus src into 1 plus 2 src into i2 minus r into sc so sc r into 1 plus src into i3 is equal to 0 so this if i take to the other side this total lcm becomes 0 as a result of that this will be this expression will holds now what is the simplification we have to basically express this uh, i2 in terms of i3 and v0 so what are this uh, i2 terms this is one i2 term another i2 term is this and here there is no i2 term so what are the total i2 terms this r into r becomes r square so minus r square s square c square into i2 plus 1 plus src into 1 plus 2 src into i2 this is the factor of i2 and uh, what is the factor of uh, i3 is this if i take to the other side this minus becomes plus src into 1 plus src into i3 plus if i take this v naught term to other side this minus becomes plus r s square c square into v naught so what is the simplification of this i2 coefficient this is minus r square s square c square plus if i multiply these two terms you will get four terms so first term is 1 into 1 1 plus 2 src plus src becomes 3 src plus twice s square r square c square into i2 is equal to same thing so what is the simplification here now implies this is plus 2 s square r square c square this is minus r square s square c square becomes 1 plus r square c square s square plus this 2 src this 1 src becomes 3 src plus 1 into i2 is equal to same thing so implies what is i2 the rhs side by this factor so what is rhs side src into 1 plus src into i3 plus r s square c square v naught divided by s square r square c square plus 3 src plus 1 this is the expression for i2 in terms of i3 and v naught this we will call as equation 5 this 5 will substitute in equation 3 what is equation 3 minus r i 2 plus two r plus 1 by sc into i 3 is there this two r plus 1 by sc the factor is i 3 so two r plus 1 by sc time by 3 
if I substitute this i2 here then this implies minus r times this everything which is becomes now s r square c into 1 plus s r c into i3 plus r square s square c square into v naught divided by s square r square c square plus 3 s r c plus 1 is this r i 2 plus remaining term is if I take s c as common here this will be 2 s r c plus 1 divided by s c into i 3 is equal to 0. So, from here we have to express i 3 in terms of v naught. So, again if I take the LCM which is SC into this one and if I take to other side this becomes 0. So, what will be the factor of the first term? This SC will be multiplied here. So, this becomes minus S square R square C square into 1 plus SRC into I 3 plus here also SC. So, this becomes r square s cube c cube into v naught and here already 2 s r c plus 1 is there this you have to multiply with s square r square c square plus 3 s r c plus 1 times i 3 is equal to 0. So, the first term and the last term are i 3 terms and whereas, this one is v naught term. So, if we take uh, these two terms to other side, then what happens? What is the total i 3 coefficient? r square s cube c cube into v naught is equal to this minus becomes plus, this plus becomes minus if I take to other side. So, this will be s square r square c square into 1 plus s r c is i 3 coefficient plus here this will be 2 times s r c plus 1 into s square r square c square plus 3 s r c plus 1 whole thing into i 3 but this plus becomes minus because I am taking this to other side. So, after simplification what will be expression for i 3 in terms of v naught? r square s cube c cube times v naught is equal to what is the simplification? s square r square c square into 1 becomes s square r square c square plus a s cube r cube c cube this into this and here this will be twice s cube r cube c cube with minus sign then this will be 6 times s square r square c square this will be minus 2 s r c. And then with 1 you will get the same term minus s square r square c square minus 3 s r c minus 1. This whole thing into i 3. So, what is the further simplification? How many s square r square uh, c square terms are there? 6 s square r square c square. So, this s square r square c square this will get cancelled. Then we have 1 6 times uh, s square r square c square. And how many s cube r cube uh, s cube terms is this is minus 2 plus 1 is minus. So, this is minus s cube r cube c cube 
minus 6 times s square r square c square and src will be this is minus 2 minus 3 minus 5 src then minus 1 into i 3 or implies what is i 3 this minus sign if we take to other side minus r square s cube c cube into v naught divided by s cube r cube c cube plus 6 s square r square c square plus 5 s r c plus 1. Now, we know that v f is equal to r times i 3. So, implies this is what is v f r square into r becomes r cube s cube c cube divided by s cube r cube c cube plus 6 s square r square c square plus 5 s r c plus 1 times v naught. Therefore, beta is equal to v f by v naught this is equal to minus r cube s cube c cube divided by s cube r cube c cube plus 6 s square r square c square plus 5 s r c plus 1. You see the final expression for the beta of this feedback network. Now, our ultimate goal is to derive the frequency of oscillations of the RC phase shift oscillator. Okay. So, for that what we are going to do here is, so A is minus R f by R 1 which is real, A beta should be equal to 1. So, in order to satisfy this beta must be real. So, based on this condition we will derive the expression for the frequency of oscillations. So, in order to express this beta as real, I will replace s with j omega. Okay. So, before that if I take this r cube s cube c cube as common, what will be the beta? This is equal to minus 1 divided by, I will take the magnitude only here for the sake of simplicity I will assume the magnitude. So, I am not taking minus sign. So, this becomes 1 because this will be divided with r cube c cube s cube plus 6 times s square r square c square by r cube s cube c cube means this will be src plus 5 times src by s cube r cube c cube means s square r square c square and this 1 by s cube r cube c cube. So, this is equal to s is equal to j omega. So, what is s square is equal to minus omega square what is s cube because j square is equal to minus 1. What is s cube? j square is minus 1, another j is there, so minus j times omega cube. If I substitute these values here, we will get 1 over 1 plus s becomes j omega. So, 6 by j omega r c plus 5 by s square means of minus omega square, this becomes minus now, minus 5 by omega square r square c square plus s cube means minus j omega. So, this will be minus 1 by j omega cube r cube c cube. Now, let us assume that this angular frequency of oscillations, if I define this omega 0 as 1 by omega r c as alpha c for the sake of simplicity. So, what happens to this beta now? This will be 1 over 1 j if I take to the numerator it becomes minus j and what is 6 by omega r c is 6 alpha minus 
phi by omega square r square c square becomes phi alpha square. This is minus j if I take to the plus it becomes plus j 1 by omega cube r cube c cube will be alpha cube. So, what are the real terms and what are the imaginary terms? In the beta 1 over real term is 1 minus phi alpha square plus j times alpha cube minus 6 alpha. This is the expression for the beta in terms of alpha. But what is the condition for this beta? Beta must be real means imaginary part should be 0. As yes, beta is real implies imaginary part must be 0. which implies alpha cube minus 6 alpha is equal to 0. Alpha if we take a common alpha square minus 6 should be 0, alpha square is equal to 6 or alpha is equal to root 6. But what is alpha? We have defined this as 1 by omega r c. Now, the frequency of oscillations. omega 0 into R c becomes 1 by root 6 or omega 0 is equal to 1 by root 6 times R c or f naught is equal to 1 over root 6 2 pi R c. This is one of the important derivation of the frequency of oscillations of R c phase shift oscillator. So, at this uh, frequency of oscillations, what will be the beta value? What will be this beta value? This is 0 and this alpha square is we have derived as alpha square is 6. So, if you substitute that, what will be beta? Beta becomes 1 by imaginary part becomes 0. So, real part is 1 minus phi alpha square. 1 by 1 minus phi into alpha square is 6. So, 1 over 29. So, what is the condition for the oscillations modulus of a beta should be greater than or equal to 1. If it is equal to 1, it, the oscillations will sustain. You want to have the sustained oscillations. a beta is equal to 1 is enough for the oscillations, but to get the sustained oscillations modulus of a beta should be greater than or equal to 1. So, what should be a, a now modulus of a into 1 by 29. This is of course, minus 1 by 29 because here we have minus term. This minus term was there here. Okay. But anyhow, we are going to take magnitude. So, magnitude of beta becomes plus 1 by 29 should be greater than or equal to 1 implies magnitude of A should be greater than or equal to 29. This is another important condition. So, this is the frequency of oscillations provided a has to be greater than or equal to 1 by 29. So, what is a is r f by r 1. In fact, minus r f by r 1 if I take magnitude r f by r 1 this should be greater than or equal to 29 means r f should be greater than or equal to 29. So, in this circuit this r f you have to choose greater than or equal to 29 times r 1. I will take one example. Design the RC phase shift oscillator which generates hundred hertz sinusoidal signal. So, f 0 is given as 100 hertz. What is the expression for f 0? Root 6 2 pi into r c. 
it implies what is R c is equal to 1 over root 6 200 pi. Let c is equal to a 0 0.1 microfarads implies R is approximately equal to 6.5 kilo ohms. So, we have find out the R and C components. What are the other components in the RC phase shift oscillator R1 and RF? Okay. So, for that what is the condition? You have to choose R1 should be less than or equal to 10 times R to avoid the loading effect. So, this R1 should be now 65 kilo ohms and another condition is Rf by R1 should be greater than or equal to 29 implies what is Rf is equal to 29 times 65 kilo ohms. So, this is about the design of RC phase shift oscillator. This is R1 value, this is R value, this is C value. So, there are the four components in this RC phase shift oscillator. The component values are C is this, R is this, R1 is this, R2 is, RF is this. So, in the circuit we have these four components only this R F R 1 uh, C and R. This is how we can design this R C phase shift oscillator. So, this second type of uh, R C oscillator is called uh, Wayne bridge oscillator okay. that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.